My friends, in the Gospel, we heard the moving story of Mary's obedience to the will of the Father. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to your word. These very words became instrumental to our salvation. So come, join us in paying homage to humankind's singular boast, the Blessed Virgin Mary. In one of our episodes, we came across the different dogmas about the Blessed Mother. Napag-usapan natin ang perpetual virginity o ang pananatiling birhen ni Maria, ang kanyang divine motherhood o ang pagiging ina ni Kristo na tunay na Diyos at tao, ang kanyang immaculate conception o ang kalinis-linisang paglilihi sa kanya ni Santa Ana, at ang assumption o ang kanyang maluwalhating pag-aakyat sa langit, katawan at kaluluwa. And yet, in the season of Advent, the Church presents to us Mary as an Advent figure. She models for us how to wait for God, how to prepare for His coming. From the very beginning, the Blessed Virgin Mary lived in total conformity and dedication to the will and plan of God. According to pious tradition, angels announced to Joachim and Anne the birth of Mary with the prophecy that God has chosen her to be the mother of the Word incarnate, His Son, who will be named Jesus. In thanksgiving, she was presented to the temple and reared there until she reached womanhood. And she knew very well that God had a plan for her, so she patiently waited for its fulfillment. Still according to tradition, Zechariah the high priest received a divine instruction telling him that Mary is to be betrothed to a man from the house of David. This man is Joseph, in whom signs were verified, like the plant that bloomed in the altar, and the dove that descended from heaven, symbolizing the consent of the Holy Spirit. Mula po noon, nagsimula ang mas marami pang mahiwagang pangyayari sa buhay ng Inang Maria. She accepted in humility the greeting of the angel Gabriel, who called her full of grace and that of Saint Elizabeth, who referred to her as the mother of my Lord. She endured the consequences of being God's partner in His plan of salvation. Her waiting for nine months for the birth of her son, just as Israel waited for the Messiah. The lack of rooms in the inn intensified the pains of labor while giving birth in Bethlehem the horror of the exile into Egypt in order to protect her son from the murderous threats of Herod, and the sorrow of seeing her son mocked, flagellated, and crucified to death in Calvary. How she firmly stood at the foot of her son's cross and accepted the will of his son for her to be mother to his church when Jesus entrusted her to the beloved disciple and to us. 
At the upper room, she and the apostles longed for consolation and the coming of the Holy Spirit. Friends, in the twists and turns of her life, Mary faithfully waited for the time designated by God. She never complained. Hindi niya sinabing, Diyos ko po naman, ano ba itong pinasok ko? Bagkos, ang lahat ay kanyang ipinagpapasalamat sa Diyos, ipinagpupuri sa Diyos. All these she bore in her immaculate heart. All these she proclaimed in her great magnificat. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. All that I am sings of the God who brings new life to birth in me. Ngayon, kung ating iisa-isahin, hindi sapat ang oras natin po para mapagnilayan ang kabuuan ng pag-aalay at pagsasakripisyon inang Maria na nag-uugat sa pagmamahal at pagtitiwala sa Diyos. Ngunit marapat nating pakatandaan na siya ay naging mahalagang instrumento ng Diyos sa pagliligtas sa atin sa kanyang fiat. Nakamtan ng sangkatauhan ang pagliligtas ni Kristo ang tagapagligtas. That is why we give her high respect because in and through her our triune God rejoices. She is the chosen daughter of the Father, the chaste spouse of the Holy Spirit, and the virgin mother of the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ. As the Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI tells us, We do not praise God sufficiently by keeping silent about His saints, especially Mary, the Holy One who became His dwelling place on earth. And it is precisely by looking at Mary's face that we can see more clearly than in any other way the beauty, goodness, and mercy of God. In her face, we can truly perceive the divine light. So, dear friends, The Blessed Mother is not only our Mother in Christ, but also our companion, intercessor, and advocate leading us closer to God, making us realize the reality of God's love and salvation. We hope that you have learned something from us today. Let us keep in mind that in all our joys and sorrows, we have a loving mother who is one with us in prayer. With this, it is my hope that all of us may be able to say, We are your servants, Lord. May your will be done in us as our hearts glorify you, as our spirits rejoice in your promise of salvation. Till our next meeting, may the good Lord bless us all.